Time to play with some clay. All right, I'm gonna start on the feathers. I have uh, scaled my feathers to the one and a quarter inch head length that I have on the uh, Warriors so that the feathers come out to the proportional size. I'll be using secondary feathers. And I'll be using uh, Victory Brown Wax, which I've got in my hand here. Now you can get Victory Brown wax uh, just about at any foundry. They mix it with other waxes that they have to make their waxes that go in the molds. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make an armature for the wax. Even though the wax is strong, it still needs an armature. Now before I can start sculpting with my wire tools that I've been using on my uh, clay, I've got to clean the clay off the, the wire tool or else it'll start looking weird on the wax. takes a flame or even get it off the handle because my fingers will transfer the clay onto the wax so I gotta get that off of there all right what I do is I have a little tiny anvil that I bought a long time ago. She's got to be at least 30 years. And I put it on a top of a piece of log to uh, stabilize it so it doesn't go bouncing around. And let's see if I can find my hammer. There it is. And I use this to straighten out my wire. want to I can flatten out the wire too. I can't even tell you how many feathers I've made in the, my lifetime. It's got to be in the thousands. And they all start the same in you know, a roll of clay. And you get a feel for the size and shape that you're looking for. And you can see I got it pretty well down pat right there. It comes with time. You can't rush it. It just takes a lot of practice, a lot of, uh, a lot of time to get to the point where you can pretty well shape something as long as you got something to go by. I uh, use a several, quite a few tools these small delicate things and you need good wire tools for everything you do these are glyptic wire tools and I, they come with different heads and different shaped heads wire heads and different sizes as you can see here and different shapes and they have little allen wrench nuts in the uh and that you put the wire in and you just tighten up that nut and it tightens the uh, wire 
in the handle and they're made of stainless steel so they don't will not break and they, if they do you just spend maybe a dollar or so and or whatever she's charging which isn't very much certainly not as much as if you were to replace a whole wooden tool so anyway it's very economical I uh, have a full selection of my tools never knowing which ones I will want to use now I'm just going to shape the feathers and put detail in them and put get them ready to put on the figure and I've as I've said before I've shown how to do all this in instructional DVDs that I have produced all right I'm making the quill for the feather and it's a matter of making a controlled roll of wax that uh, the thinner it gets the better it gets that takes practice too because you can lose control of your rolled wax like that and where it starts flopping around you just got to have patience and you eventually get the feel for it if you notice I got my fingers at a 45 degree angle even though I'm going 90 you know at a 45 degree angle to my fingers And I'm just very gently rolling. It takes time. Keep rolling it out thinner and thinner. Now I use a uh, texture tool that you can get from Sculpture Depot. It's a metal tool. And it has serrated edges, different uh, sized serrated edges really heavy duty right there I'm going to use the uh, front edge and this is what I'll do my texture for my feathers the quills now the reason I'm doing this in wax is for this very reason it will hold its shape Whereas clay, if you touch it too much, it will wear off. Got a little piece of wood right there. Well, I've got some character in the feather. I This is a feather that's going to be down the center of his back, or uh, back of his head. So it's going to have both sides showing. So I had to uh, do the uh, detailing on both sides. I'm going to put a bit of little fluff on the end of the fet. Well, I don't know if I will or not. Now I think about it, because uh, they would have just stuck. Uh, he would have just stuck his feather into his scalp lock, uh, and so it wouldn't have a wrapped end on the uh, feather. All right. What I'm going to do now. I've got to make them look like the clay so that when I photograph the finished clay it'll all look the same. And the only way to do that is by painting the uh, wax which has no effect on the casting whatsoever. I'm using a brush, a brush that somebody had sent me along with some other tools take a little bit of a and then I just uh, start painting it
what I did was I took the uh, a sample of my clay to a local paint shop and what they did was they matched the color of the clay and I use a flat finished clay not a shiny clay and uh, I'll let this sit overnight and come back to it tomorrow. Okay, that will do it for tonight. It pays to get a nice little jar to put your paint in. Something that uh, seals up and uh, preserves your paint so it doesn't dry out in the can. I've had that for a couple years now. All right, everybody have a great night. I'll see you next time. Give me a thumbs up and share my video. And then check out my instructional DVDs, uh, the link down below this video. All right, see you next time.